Hello, everybody. Thank you for attending my presentation on alcohol and epigenetics, which is a rapidly growing field and also is an important aspect of my group research focus. As you see here, alcohol has a major effect of particularly drinking um, a high quantity of alcohol has a major effect of varieties of uh, body function, affects brain, heart, liver, pancreas, immune system, uh, cancer, and as well as it affects in varieties of um, uh, different age uh, groups, uh, like adolescent alcohol abuse has a particular effect, fetal alcohol syndrome, preconception alcohol uh, also has a consequences. So my focus primarily would be to learn about epigenetic and understand how alcohol use disorder affect this epigenetic system. Why epigenetics? Scientists and clinicians have noticed that alcohol use disorder or AAD has a familial risk component. It is known that alcohol exposure during the developmental period, example, pre-embryonic period or embryonic and postnatal and adolescence period increases the predictability score of future alcohol misuse. Example, uncontrollable use of alcohol. You know, uh, this, this group of people, um, they often get into uncontrollable use of alcohol and develop alcohol use disorder. There is also some uh, develop um, AUD endophenotypes, example, anxiety, depression, hyperstress response. These uh, people with exposed uh, in pre-embryonically or embryonically or postnatal adolescent uh, develop this. The question that uh, comes next is whether alcohol alters any genetic codes of cells to function differently for development of all these AUD endophenotypes. Current genome-wide association study, GWAS literature, does not offer conclusive evidence for involvement of genetic mutation or polymorphisms in familial risk component of AD. However, epigenetic modification of genes are beginning to connect cellular functional abnormality associated with developmental alcohol abuse. Therefore, learning epigenetic would be important for uh, understanding AAD uh, abnormalities. So let me introduce the epigenetic, particularly epigenetic coding that controls the behavior of the cells. Our body has about 200 cells and uh, all contains the, the same DNA. However, they often look different and behave differently. Some of them, look the same, but behave different. Why so? A good analogy would be that different cells have different epigenetic codes and marks like barcodes here, which makes them look different or behave differently. Epigenetic mark tells our cells whether or not to read the gene, make the gene function different. So what are the epigenetic marks? There are two types of marks. One is a chemical involving methylation of a molecule or nucleotides. Uh, you know, DNA has four nucleotides, uh, ATGC. One of the nucleotides, particularly cytosines, gets through this uh, uh, methylation. And uh, sometimes adenine also gets through methylation. Cytosine are an uh, area they get methylation is uh, which are close to the guanine or G. So they are also known as GC island. There are many areas of the DNA. We have this GC island. This is the area uh, primarily target for this methylation. Uh, they, and they call CPG methylation. There's also, we have uh, uh, other, uh, uh, modification that's uh, is a protein modification and it involves histone proteins. There are all these histone proteins. And, um, and these proteins wrap around the DNA 
to form the nucleosomes in the nucleus and help into a chromatin. So the epigenetic modification or mechanisms involve then DNA methylation, histone modification, uh, and also non-coding RNA regulation. And one of the non-coding RNA is microRNA regulation, as well as reactor transposons. But most of the study focus uh, so far primarily DNA methylation and histone modification. So my um, uh, discussion talk will primarily concentrate on DNA methylation, histone modification. As I stated earlier, DNA methylation involved methylation of primarily cytosines, as shown here, and also sometimes, as I mentioned, is adenine. The deposition of methyl group uh, is really uh, uh, catalyzed uh, by uh, enzymes called DNA methyl transferases, called DNMTs. In the removal of the methyl group, is, is done by TET enzymes or TET proteins. And the name of TETs is 1011 translocation enzymes, TET. There are three kinds of DNA methyl transferases, DNMT1, DNMT3A, DNMT3B. DNMT1 is a maintenance DNMT, while 3A and 3B are de novo DNMTs. TET um, are TET1, TET2, and TET3. And these enzymes, they are, they are help conversion of 5-methylcytosine or 5-MC into 5-hydroxymethylcytosine or 5-HMC and helps to promote local specific removal of DNA methylation. Methylation appears to influence gene expression as shown here. And the reason it does that, it is affects the interaction with the transcription factors or with uh, chromatin protein attachment. Now, to look at this, uh, the, uh, the genetic of uh, the, the gene methylation, uh, there are varieties of techniques available. Uh, if one uh, like to see uh, genome-wide methylation, one could use a technique called reduced representation by sulfide sequencing or RRBS. And if one want to see methylation of specific promoter, uh, people of uh, the, the most the most specific and and uh, quantitative measurement is pyrosequencing. And there's also uh, people use MEDIP assay, which is methylated uh, DNA immunoprecipitation assay, uh, and they determine gene-specific methylation changes. Chromatin modif uh, in case of DNA methylation, as you learn, it um, major primarily cause gene expression suppression. Chromatin modification, on the other hand, is, uh, is both increases or decreases the, uh, uh, gene transcription, depending on where the modification is taking place. So let me um, just introduce the histone. That's what makes the nucleosomes and chromatin. And this histones, a protein, these are uh, 147 base pairs DNA wrapped around uh, a octomer core of histone proteins. Uh, the, the DNA is, is wrapping around this histone protein. These, uh, these are octomers and they contain uh, two of each of the histone protein, which are uh, shown here, H2A, H2B, H4, and H3. And this, these octomers, are, uh, are uh, connected with, with the linker histone, which, call, which is H, H1, which contribute, contribute to the stability of the structure. Post translational modification uh, uh, of these histones happen 
at the end terminus of the histone protein. And they are uh, referred to as a histone modification. So these are all the sites. They get uh, changes, acetylation, phosphorylation, phosphorylation methylation. So, uh, uh, so they're, they're listed uh, modification are acetylation, methylation, phosphorylation, as well as the evicutylation and ADP deriboxylation and uh, sumolation. But, um, but the, the major um, uh, investigation has been so far uh, the DNA, uh, chromatin acetylation, chromatin methylation, and phosphorylation. They each affect the gene transcription differently. Uh, acetylation of histone, most of the uh, uh, histone acetylation, not all, uh, easily turns on gene, uh, increases gene transcription. Most of the meth uh, methylation of histones uh, easily turns on gene, off, turns off gene. Phosphorylation function as an amino acid specific. Uh, some amino acid, it changes, others do not. And evicutination increases transcription or turns on genes. Now, in order to look at the, 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 uh, the histone modification, particularly opening and closing, one could use assay, which is recently developed, is called ATAC sequencing. This is a assay for, uh, or called assay for transposes accessibility chromatin with high throughput sequencing. And this uh, maps the chromatin accessibility at, at the genomoid, basically shows where the chromatin is open up and uh, gene transcription is changing. Now, um, histone methylation sites vary. It has, um, you know, it changes with the, particularly with the H3 and H4 histones. A list of the variation is shown in this table. It is noticeable that methylation at most of the sites of H3, like K9, K27, K79, causes gene repression, while methylation at the K4 position here is causes gene activation. Um, uh, uh, also uh, note that in K9 uh, position, when uh, these ch changes, uh, these happen on the gene coding region, it causes gene activation. So the histone methylation, depending on the site, depending on the position, it causes gene silencing or gene activation. So how do you see these histomethylation changes? Um, one could study use the chromatin immunoprecipitation or is called cheap assay. It's a powerful technique for analyzing histone modification as well as binding site of protein uh, that binds either directly or indirectly to DNA. Now histone acetylation or deacetylation is either acetylation turns on gene, or deacetylation turns off genes. And it's been done by these two enzymes, one called histone acetyl transferases or HATS, which uh, is cause uh, acetylation of the chromatin in uh, deacetylation of chromatin caused by histone deacetylases or HDAC. There are a large number of uh, HDAC in HAT. There are about 18 HDAC, HDAC. Uh, and there are about 30 known HATs, 18 HDACs. And um, one could measure the changes of HAT and HDAC by ELISA assay. There are many ELISA kits currently available to measure the changes of varieties of HDAC and HATS. Now, um, alcohol, why alcohol? And why does alcohol affect chromatin and DNA methylation? Alcohol exposure is, does that because it, uh, the alcohol intake 
is known to affect one carbon metabolism and production of ACE adenosyl methionine or SAM, which act as a methyl substance of DNMT here, uh, showing all the DNMTs. And also uh, that, that thereby is caused DNA methylation. SAM can also act as methyl donor in histone methylation at lysine and arginine residue of histone cells. Alcohol can also produce acetyl coenzyme A by oxidation using alcohol dehydrogenous. Acetyl coenzyme A can also act as a donor of the acetyl group of the histone acetylation process. So as alcohol do have uh, the reason causing um, the epigenetic modification. So alcohol effect on epigenetic mechanism in fetal, adolescents and adult rodent and human are now been well studied. There are um, uh, several investigators are, are leading in this field. Um, we, our interest has been primarily focused on uh, 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 prenatal alcohol or fetal alcohol and uh, also preconception alcohol and some adolescent alcohol. Um, and we have published several of them and I will discuss some of the finding here. And if you would like to learn more about the epigenetic effect of adult alcohol. There is a, a, a alcohol center. The PI of this center is Dr. Shubhas Pandey, uh, and he uh, and his colleagues has published many of these uh, uh, alcohol effect uh, on epigenetic system in the adult. So uh, Shubhas Pandey has also written many articles. So I would recommend uh, to read those articles. The adolescence alcohol uh, use is being uh, primarily conducted by many investigators, uh, but also there is a NIAAA center called Nadia, is again uh, uh, headed by Dr. Fulton Crew. Uh, he and his colleagues has also published many papers. I would recommend to read some of these uh, publications to learn more about adolescent alcohol. I'm going to um, really um, discuss some of the uh, uh, alcohol effect on epigenetic system in uh, our uh, three models. One is the preconception alcohol models. Uh, here the, in the preconception alcohol model, I wanted to describe this model. Uh, this model is, is really uh, used uh, the rodent, uh, particularly rats, uh, both Fisher and Speck Dolly rats, and these the female rats, are given uh, into three groups of rats. One is the normal rat chow, these are controlled. And another is the uh, liquid diet containing 6.7% alcohol, which gives rise to about 100, 120 milligram per deciliter of blood alcohol concentration, back level. Um, and then control uh, uh, is a pair fed control. Uh, which is uh, the isocaloric diet, we a uh, liquid diet without the alcohol. So these uh, female rats were uh, fed with uh, this alcohol for 30 days, and then they were sobered without alcohol for uh, additional three weeks before they were uh, bred to give rise the male and female pups. And we used this pup uh, and designated them as AD pups, PF pups, AF pups, around 60 days to do varieties of endocrine studies. Using this animism model, um, what we notice that these animals uh, has a um, very elevated stress response. How do you know that? Because we have seen that these, uh, these rats, uh, um, the particularly alcohol-fed rats, have a basal level of elevated cortisol. They uh, respond very highly with a LPS challenge. LPS is a lipopolysaccharide, uh, a, a bacterial protein. When given, the cortisol level goes up. Uh, this happened both male and female. And 
And also, we've not only found cortisols, but also ACTH is another hormone, stress hormone, also shows the similar response, both in male and female. Uh, now, the stress uh, axis function uh, is regulated by the varieties of neuron in the hypothalamus. Uh, one of the neurons, a major regulator called CRH, corticotropin releasing hormone, and this CRH level, when we measure, we also find them very highly elevated. Also, the, the another hormone uh, known as uh, ABP or arginine vasopressin, uh, they are also known to control this stress uh, regulation, but the ABP level did not change in this um, uh, group of animals. The, the, the third uh, hormone is called uh, uh, pro pyomelanocortin derived peptides, beta endorphin. Uh, beta endorphin has a opposite role uh, than CRH and ABP on the stress axis. This beta endorphin, which is derived from this pro pyomelanocortin peptide, which not only give rise to beta endorphin, but alpha MSH as well as ACTH, and they have uh, not only uh, regulate the stress hormone function, but also regulate the metabolic function and immune function as well. In this beta endorphin level, uh, um, unlike CRH, particularly CRH, um, the beta endorphin level uh, uh, went down. So, and this, this makes sense because more beta endorphin will be less stress response. So lower uh, beta endorphin meaning higher stress response. So because of these changes on beta endorphin, we started um, looking at the epigenetics uh, mechanism involved on those uh, beta endorphin, uh, POMC neurons and CRH neuron. But before I show those data, I also want to show you that these preconception alcohol exposed uh, offspring also have uh, hyper uh, like anxiety like behavior, uh, both uh, determined by uh, open fuel test and elevated plasma test. And we did find that, that these, particularly the male preconception alcohol fed rats have a hyper uh, anxiety behavior. So we wanted to know <clears throat> why um, is these uh, changes of these hyperstress phenotypes in these preconception alcohol exposed uh, uh, animals. So one of the approach we took is to uh, determine the genomoid marks, genomoid changes. Uh, and we did that by a method called RNA sequencing. And uh, we did the RNA sequencing on germ cells. Uh, let me explain what we are doing here. Uh, remember, uh, I, uh, we used uh, the female rats, gave alcohol for 30 days, and then left for three weeks without alcohol. So, and then bred them. So when he bred these animals, they, they didn't have any uh, alcohol. And also remember, the rat cycle is only four day cycle. So the, uh, the ovum or oocytes, which give rise to these animal, uh, the offspring, they were not really alcohol exposed. They were in, within the ovary. So we took the ova after they were sober for three weeks and did the RNA sequencing, looking at the epigenetic mark, permanent ep epigenetic mark on the ova, which led to these changes in the offspring. When you do so, we see varieties of genetic changes, genetic pathway lights up, um, and one of them are the uh, stress axis pathway. So because of that, we started looking at the, uh, some of the gene genetic changes of the stress axis pathway, as well as the epigenetic changes. So the way we did that genetic changes, we looked at by real-time PCR. Epigenetic changes, uh, particularly we focus on uh, uh, DNA methylation, which we did by pyrosequencing sequencing and also by MSPCR, uh, which is 
metal specific PCR. Using these two methods, what you do see that that hypothalamic CRA genes were elevated um, in these fetal alcohol offspring, uh, so as the CRF1 receptors. Uh, and, and, um, and when you looked at the epigenetic modification, we do find some changes of some of the part of the epigenetic island uh, uh, slightly reduction, um, uh, uh, both in the CRH and CRH receptors. You also looked at the CRH receptor in the hippocampus and amygdala. Um, these are the two area of CRH receptors to regulate the stress axis function. We found uh, slightly uh, uh, changes of the DNA methylation, uh, primarily decrease, uh, whereas the RNA level was increased. In case of POMC, we found that the, the RNA level is, is decreased and methylation level is increased both by MSPCR and pyro sequencing. So this suggests that there is a significant methylation changes uh, going on within the HPA uh, or hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis, which regulate the stress hormones. So with this model, we are still using this model to study more further these epigenetic changes. In, uh, and we think the epigenetic changes are the one which are causing these genetic changes of these varieties component of the stress axis function. In order to prove that epigenetic modification is involved this stress hyper response in this home, we use uh, uh, blockers of this epigenetic modification, uh, particularly DNA methylation. The blocker are known as ASA. Um, and this blocker basically reduce all the methylation process. So when you uh, take this preconception alcohol exposed uh, animals and, and uh, during the, uh, the postnatal period, we, um, or the adult period, we use the ASA and we completely reverse it. Uh, both at the gene expression of POMC as well as the gene methylation. This suggests that um, the, the, the uh, DNA methylation is an important component of the stress hyper response in a preconception alcohol exposed animal. We also use the fetal alcohol exposed model uh, to study the epigenetic modification. Um, within the, in the fetal alcohol exposed model, we uh, use varieties of, um, uh, again, uh, rats, uh, and um, using uh, two different kinds of rat. One is Sprague Dolly, as well as Fisher, three, four rat. Spray, uh, the Fisher rats are isogenic, which, are, which helps to determine the, uh, the, the epigenetic modification, particularly dealing multiple generation. Sprague Dolly rats are not isogenic, uh, so there may be another genetic influence on the changes. So studying both uh, rats are quite important. Um, uh, so, and we also use a variety of different model. Uh, one model where you use uh, uh, the fed the mother with a 6.7% uh, alcohol, which gives rise to about 120 milligram per deciliter uh, blood level of alcohol, um, and they are fed between uh, um, the gestational day seven until 21. Uh, this is equivalent to human uh, uh, second, uh, first and second trimester of pregnancy. Uh, we, we also have um, done some work, uh, similar work in uh, feeding uh, uh, rats in first seven days after birth. Uh, that is equivalent to third trimester of uh, uh, pregnancy. I'm going to present most of the data, data dealing with the second trimester of a human pregnancy equivalent model. 
So using this model, where again, what you see that they have a, um, this animal, the, the offspring of uh, fetal alcohol expose, exposure also have a uh, stress hyper response. Both ACTH level is elevated, particularly after the LPS challenge in both male and female. We see uh, uh, corticostal response elevated, um, a, particularly uh, after LPS. And, um, uh, and interestingly, the stress response, um, even though we found in uh, both uh, um, sexes, but the response was a little higher in female. As we uh, showed you before, that there is a good evidence now that the, um, the stress response uh, is uh, uh, controlled by um, not only the CRH um, uh, and AVP system, but also POMC system uh, uh, or beta endorphin neurons, which uh, suppress uh, these uh, cortic uh, corticosterone and and, uh, and ACTH uh, release, um, and therefore it makes the st uh, stress elevation uh, to a, bring it down to a normal stage. Um, when you look at the POMC uh, gene expression, uh, we find they are reduced, uh, uh, both male and female, as well as beta endorphin, uh, which, produ which produce from POMC genes, also reduced. Uh, when you look at the uh, DNA methylation of these POMC genes using py both pyro sequencing and MSP. Uh, the data shown here is pyro sequencing. Uh, what you do see that with the POMC genes, um, there are many uh, CPG islands. Uh, I remember I mentioned earlier on the CPG island is where the cytosines uh, get um, uh, methylated, and we identify uh, several CPG islands. And particularly the, in the area, promoter area between 216 uh, 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 to 262 uh, is change. Uh, uh, but uh, so these are the two area where we get a hypermethylation both in male and female. So there is a significant uh, methylation of the POMC genes uh, in the fetal alcohol exposed male and females. Um, so, so we also looked at the varieties of epigenetic missionaries uh, to understand more details on how these POMC gene uh, expression changes. And um, some of the data are shown here uh, uh, in a, a schematic form, and others you can um, um, get them from these publications. Uh, as you can see here, um, there are um, changes of varieties of genes. So this methylation, acetylation uh, of, of histones and others uh, is, is governed by varieties of genes which regulate their methylation, acetylation. Some of them are listed here, SET7, CBP, uh, CBPP is, is cyclic MP binding protein and cyclic binding kinases. Uh, they uh, go down. Um, by fetal alcohol exposures uh, within the POMC cells. I remember we did this by doing the, uh, the, uh, the immunocytochemical uh, identification of these genes within the cells or by removing the cells with laser capture microscopy and then look at the gene expression. When you do so, we find that the set seven CBP uh, uh, phosphate and kinase both goes down the effect uh, H3K permethylation, H3K9 acetylation, and uh, uh, phosphorylation of S10. Uh, so these are uh, all goes down. Uh, G9A uh, and uh, H3K9, uh, however, they go up. Um, so, and also uh, the other changes we see at the signal level, HP1, CAP1, HDAC, ME, CP2, and DNMTP, DNMTs, they're all goes, goes up. So the, in conclusion of all these things, which are uh, described in these two papers, that the fetal alcohol exposures cause uh, reduction uh, of uh, deacetylation, uh, it reduces the acetylation process, 
and increases DNA methylation process, and thereby it changes the POMC gene function. So as you can see, that that is not a uh, you know easy process. Uh, now we are started learning how these complex uh, the epigenetic machinery can be affected by alcohol and affected a, a, a physiological function as well as the behavior. Remember, POMC and CRH also are critically involved in, uh, in behavioral phenotype like depression, anxiety, and others, which <coughs> are regulated by these peptides. We also confirm that the epigenetic machinery is critical for fetal alcohol effect on POMC by treating uh, these two blocker called TSA and ASA. Uh, TSA uh, block the, the chromatin modification, ASA blocks the DNA methylation, and both system block it is uh, reverse this alcohol effect on this POMC methylation as well as POMC gene expression. So in, in the cartoon picture, then we show here that when you have a fetal alcohol exposures, it increases the methylation by DNA, by DNMTs, increasing DNMTs and others, and also uh, causes deacetylation uh, by uh, working on the G9A and SET7s and others. Um, and uh, when you put these uh, TSA or AJA, they, they reverse this and normalize this function. So it clearly shows that the epigenetic component, particularly the changes of the POMC gene methylation, is very important in the fetal alcohol uh, exposed uh, uh, effect on the uh, neuroendocrine system. Uh, so how is it relevant to human? Uh, in order to look at that, we also um, collaborated with um, uh, consortium of a, a fetal alcohol syndrome or CFAS <clears throat> uh, in, um, and obtained samples from the fetal alcohol uh, exposed children and uh, studied the, the stress uh, hormone. And we do find that the, um, these children has hyper stress, a basal level of uh, increased stress uh, hormone. Um, uh, stress hormones uh, um, uh, is uh, uh, released in the uh, circulatory system as well as in the saliva uh, in a diurnal fashion. Uh, morning level is high, afternoon level, level is low. As you can see here, uh, both uh, the male and female uh, of fetal alcohol syndrome uh, children has a higher level of salivary cortisol. Uh, morning also uh, uh, elevated, but significantly higher in the afternoon. So, um, so the question arises then, um, if we understand our study with the preconception or other, the mother when they drink alcohol, uh, it really um, turns on uh, their gene also uh, get modified. Um, and so we, we uh, ask the question whether or not a pregnant woman who are drinking alcohol or drank alcohol and gave rise to um, fetal alcohol children, did they also have a abnormal uh, changes of gene expression, particularly POMC gene, which we see are very sensitive to alcohol? And uh, the answer to that question is indeed, these, the, the pregnant women who drank alcohol and uh, gave rise to fetal alcohol children they have a elevated uh, DNA methylation of POMC gene. So a same, similar question we asked then, uh, what about the children? Do they have these, uh, these increased changes of this uh, POMC gene methylation? And uh, data are shown here. Uh, these are the children. Um, um, they were between um, two to uh, eight years or seven years old, but the exact date you can find in this publication. Um, and what you do find here um, that, that both male and female uh, uh, who have a fetal alcohol exposures, or uh, we call them PAE or prenatal alcohol exposed, uh, and some of them have already clear, clear sign of fetal alcohol spectrum disorder, 
Uh, others um, uh, are uh, not completely clear, but they are fetal alcohol exposed, uh, and they all have uh, elevated uh, uh, elevated level of uh, POMC gene methylation. This is done by two different methods, uh, MSPCR as well as virus sequencing, and we define a confirm that the hypermethylation of POMC gene is elevated for fetal alcohol exposed children. This also gives a um, good opening to identify as a biomarker for fetal alcohol exposed children, both in mother as well as children. Uh, another interesting thing is uh, we uh, did um, is to really prove that that the, the um, epigenetic modification is a critical component of this these phenotype development. We also um, uh, conduct a study with uh, one of the members of the CFAS um, uh, and, uh, who, who used uh, a treatment of choline. Uh, choline is a substance which uh, also affect um, DNA methylation. And in the animal study, we and a few others have shown that choline can reverse some of the fetal alcohol uh, effect on the neuroendocrine system. Um, so we also thought that choline, uh, which is a, a nutrient substance, uh, given choline could have uh, some impact on these uh, DNA methylation process, particularly in our genes. And uh, indeed, we did find some, uh, and it's exciting. Uh, and what you do see here, that, that um, <clears throat> these patients with the fetal alcohol exposed um, uh, or fetal alcohol syndrome, they were given choline uh, for, for several months, uh, and they were brought in and took samples. So they were uh, given choline uh, probably approximately nine months and they were uh, brought in to uh, take in some uh, samples. Uh, I think these are uh, blood samples. And we looked at the um, DNA methylation of POMC genes and measured the uh, measure at, uh, at the visit one and visit two. So what you do see here um, that visit one, um, the, the placebo, um, you know, had um, the normal type of DNA methylation. And so, and when he did the choline, the choline visit one um, has slight changes, but visit two has a significant reduction of POMC gene methylation. So suggesting that choline is preventing or reversing some of the DNA methylation effect uh, on these patients. A POMC, you know, this is gene methylation. POMC gene expression, on the other end, was low uh, in the, in the uh, visit one of the fetal alcohol exposed children, but um, a, but but uh, getting no, normal or elevated uh, after visit two, showing there's a uh, significant good effect of calling to reversing some of the epigenetic modification or POMC gene, uh, both in methylation and gene expression. So to conclude then, uh, for this part of the talk, that the fetal alcohol exposures uh, has effect on both DNA methylation as well as chromatin modification. At the DNA methylation level, it works on the DNMT1, uh, as well as the MECP2 and MDB1 in, in increases uh, the methylation of CPG uh, within the POMC genes. At the uh, histone level, it works on the HDAC, which is uh, 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 suppresses, um, reduces the acetylation of H3K9, also reduces um, methylation of H3K4, and also works on the G9A and said DB1, uh, reduces the methylation of HDK, uh, K9. So by this way, it affects the POMC gene um, expression. So this is um, 
uh, um, this work is still continuing uh, and, um, and um, we are still learning a lot more about the epigenetic modification of POMC and other genes within the fetal alcohol system. Another interesting thing I wanted to show before I conclude my presentation is the fetal alcohol effect. What you saw in offspring has an inheritability effect. It not only lasts for one generation, it goes on for multiple generations. And that's, that is a uh, 10 generational phenomenon. So we also looked at that. Uh, this is the uh, first time um, ever shown that there is a transgenerational component of alcohol effect on epigenetic modification. And this has been published in 2012. And this is now been shown in uh, not only the stress axis and POMC system, but also shown on brain development uh, and, and also shown in various other drugs like cocaine uh, and opioids and other drugs um, are beginning to show. So what we show here, we took the fetal alcohol exposed um, offspring, uh, for example, showing here, we made two germline to figure out how this fetal alcohol, ex uh, whether or not fetal alcohol exposed uh, the phenotype to transmit for multiple generation through a male germline or female germline. Why did he need to do that? Because we need to really understand how do they transmit. So the way we did that, we had this fetal alcohol exposed offspring and, and then bred them. Um, they bred the male with a female, normal female. Uh, this again, this is a fetal alcohol exposed normal female and made a, uh, the male uh, germline. And then we continue mating the, the fetal alcohol uh, male germline of fetal alcohol exposed with the control female to make three generation F1, F2, F3. We also did the female, uh, a, uh, the uh, female uh, and bred with a normal male and made the female germline and then studied the POMC genes, both methylation as well as the gene expression. And what you do find that both male and female of fetal alcohol ex exposed F1 uh, generation have elevated or DNA met uh, increased uh, DNA methylation of POMC gene and decreased DNA, uh, uh, decreased POMC gene expression in male and female in F, uh, F1 population. In F2 population, <clears throat> we do find that in male, male particularly male germline, it still exists, the DNA hypermethylation. And the POMC genes is, is not so much. Uh, it, it still exists in male, but female, is very not so much. A female second generation, this methylation is, doesn't exist. Third generation in the female germline doesn't exist. Uh, um, female germline, but male germline uh, is, is still exist. So, so this is um, not only done with these POMC genes, but we also, uh, this is in published. Um, we also see that in the immune genes. We also see that um, in uh, uh, some of the behavioral phenotype, which lasts for multiple generations, all the way to uh, F2 and F2, F1, F2, and F3. So what it suggests then, that this, this epigenetic effect may have an inheritance component, which can pass on for multiple generations. And this is very, um, very uh, scary part because so those the mark we are making those epigenetic mark is not lasting for the offspring but for many many generation grandchild and grandchildren so um, we have done many work with these these fetal alcohol exposures and an epigenetic modification and um, and 
looked at the many of these um, the phenotype, um, and as I as you saw earlier, we showed that the exposure effect on the POMC gene methylation lasted F1, F2, F3, um, and it it was caused by uh, DNA methylation and and uh, and histone deacetylation uh, and and it's affected uh, the beta endorphin genes and beta endorphin uh, uh, protein, which is uh, produced uh, by POMC genes. And POMC genes uh, has not only effect on, uh, on um, stress response, but also effect on uh, immune systems. Uh, there are um, several publication we have had um, th that's involved dealing with the, the fetal alcohol exposed uh, animals and, and aggressive cancer development. Um, and we do find um, many, uh, and also immune system dysfunction. Uh, we also have publication related to the fetal alcohol exposed uh, alteration uh, of metabolic systems um, via uh, POMC neurons. So, so the alcohol has a, a, has a lot of effect in many, many systems. And epigenetic uh, system helped us really understanding uh, uh, some of the molecular events involved in these alcohol effect on varieties of um, alcohol endophenotypes and learning lots about uh, the physiology of uh, uh, abnormal uh, of the AUD, A -A -U -D, uh, 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 the endophenotypes. Uh, and so it has helped us um, tremendously uh, uh, the, the understanding of the alcohol effect in varieties of uh, uh, endocrine and other physiological system. With that, I wanted to um, appreciate uh, and acknowledge the uh, support by NIAAA and thank you for listening.